The Santander Caterham 7 310R Championship rolls into Alton Park off the back of a dominant first four rounds of the championship for Gordon Sawyer. As a result of those four race victories, he holds a 10-point championship lead arriving at Alton Park over James Cormack with James Beardwell some way back in third. Tom Grensinger and David Yates round out the top five. It was a breathless opening encounter at Alton Park, with Jay McCormack from the outside of row two snatching the lead into the first corner. Further back, there was drama as Ben Gilias went off at Cascades and spun in front of the pack, very lucky to be avoided by everybody else. At the front, it was a nine-car train for the race lead, which in the early portion of the race saw McCormack getting his elbows out and keeping Andrew Perry at bay. Contact between Matt Topham and Doug Christie sent them both out of the race in spectacular fashion down at his lops, and that would not be the last drama at that part of the circuit. At the front, Jay McCormack was doing everything he could to get back into the race lead. Once he found a way past Gordon Sawyer, though, Andrew Perry engaged in a fierce battle with McCormack for the race victory. Contact was made on more than one occasion before eventually more wheel banging down at the chicane sent McCormack into a spin, delayed Andrew Perry, and allowed Tom Grensinger through to take the race victory in dramatic fashion. So Tom Grensinger on pole position for race two as well here at Alton Park with Richard Lambert alongside him, the two blue cars sharing the front row, Andrew Perry and Pete Walters on row number two. Race number six of the season this is for the Santander Caterham 7 310R Championship, expecting more of the same sort of drama we saw earlier on today. On board with James Beardwell for the start, he gets a good launch off the line, up through the gears, there's a gap which closes and there's contact unfortunately with Martin Pratt and bang into the barriers unfortunately will go big. Well, quite a lot of damage, I think, sustained to both cars. We may, unfortunately, have already seen our first two retirements. Running wide there was Donald Henshaw, the blue and white number 19 car. We're on board with championship leader Gordon Sawyer. Now, Gordon Sawyer ended up dropping down to seventh place at the end of the previous race. That was not good for his early championship advantage. He'll be keen to try and fight back in this race, if at all possible. Everyone else getting through safely. That is Martin Pratt. Unfortunately, there is damage on the 52 car after that tangle he had with James Beardwell. Sadly, he may be about to pull off the road into retirement. It's bodywork rubbing on the tyre, but there may well be steering and suspension damage. The exhausts are fairly uh, vulnerable on these cars as well. Either way, too much damage to continue, and he pulls off the road. Back at the sharp end, though, it is an enormous queue of Caterhams that make their way out of shell for the first time of asking. On board with the points leader, Gordon Sawyer, who's in about sixth position, I reckon, as they turn through Britain. So he's gained one position, by my reckoning, from his starting spot. Needs to gain some more, though, because the likes of Jay McCormack are also starting to take points out of him, as well, of course, as Tom Grensinger, the race leader, who was the first person not named Gordon Sawyer to win a race this season earlier on today, and he's looking for the double now this afternoon. There around the outside line goes Harry Landy, the 21 car, dicing away with car number 30 there, Ben Gilias, who we saw having that moment in the previous race at Cascades. And there, unfortunately, is James Beardwell, and he's pulled off, I think, at the same part of the circuit that Martin Pratt has, so both of them are out after this contact off the line. Beardwell got a good start. They were already three abreast in front of him, and four, unfortunately, was too many caterums wide across this fairly narrow start-finish line. In fairness to James, he recovered from that quickly, tried to get going again, but too much damage was done. So the race leader's then down towards Lodge Corner, and Jay McCormack is out in front, but running off wide behind is Andrew Perry. That was a bizarre moment. He sort of rattles down the barriers, now full throttle to try and dig the car out of the gravel trap. He is going to rejoin, but a lot further down the order than he was. That was a bizarre moment there for Andrew Perry, who was, it seemed, a little way behind the leading quartet going into the corner and suddenly found himself getting a bit too close for comfort. Damage there to the 66 car as it works its way through um, Old Hall Corner, 66 being Jake Swan Dixon. Now here's a replay of what happened to Andrew Perry. I think he was watching his mirrors there to try and keep an eye on what Donald Henshaw was doing and completely missed his braking point and had to take to the grass and eventually the barriers to avoid running into the back of the cars in front. Did well to get away with that without too much damage, but quite a bit of time is lost. Donald Henshaw getting stuck in again, and so too into second position look is uh, Gordon Sawyer. So the points leader is now starting to make his presence felt at the sharp end of the field. Grensinger leads the way. Sawyer is in second position, third from McCormack, having started 12th. So both he and Sawyer started outside the top half dozen and have already got themselves into podium positions. Donald Henshaw is in fourth position there, the blue car with the black stripes. 
And then at the back of this group, the all-black car is that of Pete Walters, number 88. So a five-car train fighting for the race lead, fighting for the podium positions, out of Druids, down towards the braking zone at Lodge Corner. McCormack ducks out of the slipstream, so too does Gordon Sawyer, who has this points lead to try and protect, remember, but at the same time, a race victory now would go down very well indeed. Who's going to come out of this on top? McCormack's had the better exit from Lodge Corner, goes to the inside line. He's getting a slipstream from Grensinger as well, and in fact, he might try and go up the inside of both of them. Yes, he is. McCormack going for the race lead, goes from third to first in one move. That was brilliant stuff. Rensinger hangs on to second. Henshaw goes through into third. And in the end, it's Gordon Sawyer that sort of lost out there. He was second two corners ago. And now he's off the podium with work to be done once more. That is how quickly your fortunes can change in catering racing. And the 310R Championship once again providing great entertainment. A bit of smoke there coming from Donald Henshaw's car. I think that was just maybe the bodywork rubbing under extreme load out of the corner as the leaders were almost side by side going into Island Bend. It's a brave part of the circuit to try and run wheel to wheel though. And in the end, Jay McCormack backed out of that potential manoeuvre. So the three blue cars at the front of the field. The blue and yellow is Tom Grensinger. Blue and red is Jay McCormack. And the blue and black in third position, Donald Henshaw, who's been had a, an entertaining race so far, it's fair to say. Looking for a podium result here if he can get one. Takes lots of curb, noticeably more curb than anybody else through the right-hand element of Britain's. Didn't really seem to help his exit speed, though, because Gordon Sawyer is all over him going down the hill. And Gordon in the yellow and black number 77 car looks to the inside line. He's going to be late on the brakes, but the gap is always closing. Locks up both front wheels, did well to avoid contact and will now be slower through the chicane than the chasing Pete Walters who tries to get alongside and can't quite do it so up the hill they stay in the same order but this is typically close racing you've got to be careful though when you're in a pack of cars like this if you go for a move and you end up losing momentum you could lose two or three positions at least so really in a way if you're right at the front or right at the back of the queue you have the advantage because you only have one job to worry about either defense or attack everyone in the middle is trying to do two things at once and they're going to be almost three abreast as they go down into lodge corner mccormack around the outside though takes the race lead a good exit from druids a good slipstream down the straight and then late on the brakes through lodge corner means that the blue and red number 25 car is now back out in front Grensinger fighting back though, looks to the inside, down to Walt Hall Corner and makes it look very easy, goes back through into the race lead. So these two trading the lead between themselves. The third place, Donald Henshaw and Gordon Sawyer battling and they will be almost side by side, I think, going down towards Cascades. Sawyer on the left-hand side of the shot has the outside line for Cascades. Henshaw fights back and there's contact between the two of them and they're both off into the gravel with heavy damage for both cars and that is the championship leader involved, Gordon Sawyer, after coming into this weekend, what had been a flawless championship campaign with four wins from four races at Alton Park it's all gone wrong a seventh place in race one is followed by a non-finish in race two and it looks like Henshaw is out as well well that all leaves Tom Grensinger and Jay McCormack really to debate the race lead now over the remaining half a lap that is left in this race it's been another thoroughly entertaining affair and one that may well have a huge bearing on the championship outcome come the end of the season that is really the first really bad race that we've seen for Gordon Sawyer frustratingly just as he was starting to mix it for a podium position for the first time this weekend there he is he was the championship leader but likely to be so now though because Tom Grensinger is already on for a really good point score here and that's just after race one if he can win race number two as well that's even more points in the bag but Jay McCormack will have something to say about that he's in the slipstream just two corners to go now over Clay Hill this is where the toe starts to take effect McCormack closes in can he draw along side towards Druid's corner if he could he opted not to because I think he's focusing more on the run towards Lodge corner remember this is where he got the lead a lap ago around the outside of Grensinger it will be the outside that is presented to him again though because Grensinger immediately moves over to the uh, inside of the road to defend to the outside goes McCormack gets his nose in front tries to turn across the front of the race leader and can't quite do it locks up and runs wide and in fact that could allow Pete Walters to attack for second place on the run to the checkered flag which for the second time today is taken by Tom Grensinger a brilliant drive that was a double race victory at Alton Park McCormack is fairly happy with second and Pete Walters will round out the podium finishers this is the fight meanwhile for eighth position with Tim Child there sweeping around the outside of the walking wounded Jake Swan Dixon they'll both be inside the top 10 at the end of the race though well, deep breath, everybody. That was a phenomenal race. Both races today for the 310Rs have been sensational, and both races today for the 310Rs have been won by Tom Grensinger. Joining him on the podium, Pete Walters in third, Jay McCormack second place. They will all take good points out of erstwhile championship leader Gordon Sawyer. There was no beating Grensinger today, though.
Yeah, it was really, really close. Um, it was nice to <coughs> nice to be able to toe up to people and <laughs> get them going into turn one and going down to cascades. And there was a lot of lot of hard fought battles in there that I gladly won. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. First year in Cape Town racing and to come to the third weekend and get one too is amazing. Absolute credit to the team. They've pulled everything out and, and really went overboard to get us here today. So massive thanks to all the team. I can't thank them enough. It's fabulous. Oh, I mean, after the first race, I, I was kind of strategically just sitting there, just having a look at what's going on. I'm still running a new engine, so I'm, it's, it still needs a little bit more to free it up. And I was just watching the guys in front and it was like, I'll stay with you. It's so close and it was such tight battles at the front, anything could happen and I was just literally waiting to pounce. So yeah, it went my way. Well, after two fantastic races here at Alton Park, it's Jay McCormack who comes out on top by just five points from Tom Grensinger, very much a contender now. Gordon Sawyer drops down to third, ahead of David Yates and Andrew Perry. Grensinger then the man to beat and he'll be looking to continue this momentum through the rest of the year.